foreskin or no? No. Welcome back to Podcast the Hero. Uh, no, my parents stole that from me as a as a baby. Might as they well. They took it. I'm kind of glad they did. Yeah, me too. I feel like I would just be playing with it all the time. Yeah, I mean, like I'm I'm like a nose picker. I'm like always like picking my bugs. Everyone's a nose picker. And I feel like I would just be like a foreskin picker. Like I'd just be always like in uh, there just doing circles around it with my finger down schmig. in there and you know. Yeah, I don't know. I I don't know that there is a scenario where I play with my penis more. <laughs> true. You know, true, true. I, I'm not displeased with uh I have a, being I have cut. a full work day where I'm on on camera and I'm mm. always very worried that like I'm going to get up from my chair or something yeah. and something's going to be exposed. Is this roughly how you look on work camera? mm mm-hmm. Mhm. No hat. Yeah. But so, hmm, can't see what you're fiddling with there. But yeah, I guess hmm. if you're standing up and you've been fiddling. But I'm also like this when I'm on camera. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's nice. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. Oh, oh, oh. oh that's my penis. <laughs> um, th- I have the little gift for you. Oh, off the top. Uh, right off the top. Uh, you wrote a song about how you wish that I would have trimmed my mustache close. I noticed already. I think I think it looks sharp, dude. And I'm, you're making me feel because uh, mine is not very yeah trimmed right now. So you're making me feel uh, like a dirty, disgusting person. It wasn't on purpose. So, I was you were trimming. You're doing your normal trim, and you went too far. Yep. Yeah. And then I was like, "Oop! I better even that out. Oop! I better." Even- <laughs> this whole thing's about cutting. Yeah, cutting. Yeah. Um. Um. um we do that. I say um a lot. That's okay. Just, who cares? I'm gonna say it again. I can't help it. Um. Like I know it. I know what I want to say, but I know I'm gonna say um first. Okay. Um. Can we talk about hockey real fast? <laughs> that was a really fast um. And yeah. yes, I would love okay. to. Uh. What is the softest goal you've ever seen given up? I recently saw, uh, you know what? I was going to say I saw a Jack Campbell AHL um, I saw that video. penalty shot goal. Yeah. It was labeled on Reddit, the most Jack Campbell goal ever. Where it was like, he made the save. And then it just kind of popped up over him and off yeah. his back and in the net. That was up there. But I watched, um, so I'm thinking of two separate ones. There was one where I watched, what was his name? French guy. Why can't I think of his name? It was like him and Reimer were A and B for the Leafs. Uh, He was the guy who was like talking. He was at the Nelson Mandela thing. And he was like, he gives it 110% every time he's out on the ice with us. I'm like, (laughs) thought Nelson Mandela was a hockey player. Um, (laughs) What's his fucking name? That's wild how a it handful, just jumps out of your head. Handful of years pass. Uh, but I saw him let one in from the red line once. And then Mike Smith, you remember that really bad one he let in? It was like from the fucking other end. He just got hit hard behind the net. And then it was just like a dump in. It was like probably going to be icing. That's how far away it was. And it fucking went in. <laughs> So those are the uh, ones that come to mind. Was it Felix Pavan? <laughs> no. Jonathan Bernier? That's it's Jonathan Bernier. Um, yeah, Bernier I, let in a there was of real uh, soft one ones. of the softest goals I've ever seen was tonight. Oh really? I didn't watch yeah. any hockey tonight. Islanders Red Wings are just starting the third, and uh, uh, Reimer uh, just it was like no one in front of him. Yeah. Shot from the blue line, like ju- no tip, no redirection, nothing, just at right at him, um, just yay high off the ice, and it somehow went five hole. <laughs> uh, well, it's funny that it's Reimer, because one of the ones yeah. that I thought was Bernier, who was like basically partners with Reimer for a long time, yeah. but they probably hated each other. 
Um, and in relation to Rhymer letting it in, I'll say God works in mysterious ways. Um, AKA, <laughs> if you're a fucking homophobe because of God, uh, bad things happen to bad people, not because of karma, but because of uh, just that's the like yeah. energy you put in the world comes back to you, you piece of shit Rhymer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, second question. Yep. Is Tom Wilson going to get like 20 games? He's going to get some, right? I mean, there is no hockey related reason to one handed swing a stick like that. Yeah. You know what? I watched the- that live. Yeah. And rewound it and yeah. turned to Cage and was like, whoa, watch this. This is Chris. <laughs> um, here's the thing by the time this podcast is released i yeah. imagine the announcement we'll of his five thousand dollar fine will come yeah. come down um but they have just had that huge gm meeting in florida and mm-hmm. the gms i believe came down pretty fucking hard on george peros who is the uh, director of the player safety yeah. and whatever he's the one who decides those things uh, the penalties, and he's like fucking golf buddies with Wilson. That's why Wilson's record is not as yeah. uh, drastic as it should be. But he <laughs> he has to like he Wilson broke Gregor's teeth. Yeah, they're smashed to bits. Yeah, <laughs> they're chipped. But like, I don't know. I saw it, and like it looked bad, but it also looked like. Like, there was obviously what looked to be intention behind it and immediate regret. Right. <laughs> like, he smashed him in the face. I can't see what and else he went, was like, doing. And then went, like, saw him going down and went, I'm sorry. What yeah. did I do? And he caught him and was just like, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. And then argued the penalty. Um, <laughs> I mean, they're I, just, I just can't I'm not think even mad of a about it. Like, single situation in the game of hockey that would require you to swing your stick in such a way. Like there's no justification. The only possible way that you could make that move happen is if you're intentionally trying to smash a dude in the face. Yeah. It looked really intentional and like it had the same energy as when, um, you hurt your sibling. Yeah. And then apologize like as many times as quickly as possible. Because you know you're going to get in trouble from your mom. (laughs) Exactly. I'm sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Don't cry, don't cry, don't cry, don't cry. (laughs) But yeah, like it was weird. Like usually when I see an egregious fucking thing like that happen, especially to like one of the players on the team that I cheer for, I feel like up in arms a little bit. Like Mm -hmm. I feel like angry and like, what the fuck is that? Because... I yeah, know. especially like usually if it happens to the Leafs, nothing happens. Like, guarantee you, Brad Marchand does that to a Leaf, nothing happens. Uh, but I think that this scenario is fairly unique given the timing of it and the timing of the like GM's meeting and George Peros coming out publicly and being like, "I've taken more beatings here than I ever did in on the ice" or whatever he said. <laughs> so I think, I think he's going to get the book thrown at him. But also, maybe he's going to get something that's just, like, consistent with what he should get. Yeah. And George Peros is, for the interim, going to start doing his job like he should have always been doing his job. Yeah. You know, like, in a in a reasonable world, what is that suspension? What Like, what is it? So, it, I, like, it's hard to say at this point because he's muddied the water so much. Like, I don't yeah. even really fucking know. Like, I, I mean, say, I like, just look at like games. Wilson's history, right? Yeah. Like, he caught twenty games for an open ice hit, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, uh, that was reduced to fourteen. Yeah, that was like his biggest suspension, and I can understand that's like one. that's a hockey play. Mm-hmm. Right? Laying a hit on somebody in the open ice is still a hockey play. Yeah. This is like borderline. This is this is Bertuzzi (laughs) punching a dude in the back of the head. Yeah. This is not a hockey play. I think it's gotta be fourteen at the minimum. Oh. Based on I don't know. What the previous standard that's been set specifically against Wilson. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like 
my I don't know. That, I, the the I, waters also, are too muddy. There's no like there is no fucking standard. Yeah. There is no like precedent. Like it could be fucking five games. It could be fucking forty games. Who knows? Yeah, I would. But say, I also i I hate Tom Wilson anyway. I kind of like him. I don't. I know it's weird because he's like a rat kind of. Yeah, but, but like a, my he's thing, handsome as hell. Yeah, like he's really good looking. He's huge. Yeah. B, he's like that kind of like he'll throw the big hits and he is like fairly fucking dirty, but yeah. he can also score. Like he's not a fucking Reeves. He's not like no, he, he's, he's he's also a good player. Yeah. He's yeah, like, not he's not Brad strictly Marchand an were, enforcer. If Brad Marchand were strong and scary, yeah. He would resemble him. Yeah. I think, but Brad Marchand is just like a little dirty rat. Yeah. That's also very good. I I think I would respect Wilson more if he took the dirty part out of his game. Of course. Right? Like Of course. You you can you can you be a big about, bad dude and score goals. You can be Cronwall. Yeah. Right? But you would say that about any rat in the league. Yeah. Right? Like you can say that about fucking Mac But there's Kachuk, a difference Kachuk. between I think there's a difference. Like if you look like Marshan or I don't know. I just think about like the the guys who are like that I think of as rats. They're usually the guys that aren't six four two forty. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like so, you you have a role in it when you're six four. When you're the biggest guy on the ice and you're dirty, it feels like you're, you're just kind a of fucking a rat bully. king. Yeah. Yeah, I, I I kind of agree with that. I like, never really thought about that. There should be some differentiation taken yeah. for the guys that are dirty and strong. Yeah, <laughs> right. Like you think yeah, about if you're strong, just like, hit a guy or fight a guy. Now, yeah, Marshawn is a fucking coward. Yeah, um, like will never take a fucking fight or answer for what he's done, and then yeah. he'll go out and hurt someone in like yeah. a really weird way. Yeah, um, that like no one could see coming. Like the fucking can opener on Lilligram. Yeah. Um, and it, I, I gotta say, Kachuk is kind of an amalgamation of that. Cause, like, I don't remember if you remember the Battle of Alberta a number of years ago when Kachuk and Cassian were getting into it. Kachuk fought him and yeah. he did pretty fucking well for himself, man. Also, like, it, he made Drew Doughty look like a fucking baby. Yeah. Right, where it was like, Drew Doughty didn't come out looking very good in that. Like, you're thinking like, oh, I'd love to see someone feed this kid his lunch. And then it's like, well, you can't. Yeah. Because he'll fucking feed you yours. Yeah. But yeah, that's my thoughts. All right. On some rats. Yeah. But then guys like Truba. What about Truba? Like, he's not, he's not doing like fucked up dirty stuff but all of his hits are like borderline so close yeah it's like oh did he like a lot of people just be like he was aiming for the shoulder it's like well he got nothing but his head and he fucking right. turned his head into mashed potatoes so um <laughs> like he's not really a rat he's i wouldn't call his play dirty in the same vein as like marshawn uh, but I would call his hits like always questionable. <laughs> yeah, it's like a guy who hasn't quite, uh, hasn't quite figured it out. Yeah, I in can't terms figure of out like the they... new no head rules, right? Yeah. It's just like well, this is the way I always did it, yeah. and I it was fine before. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I fucking I like Truba as a human being because I've seen some stuff like that stuff where he makes art by covering his body in paint and running <laughs> into a fucking <laughs> canvas. Like I think he's funny. I think he's cool. I think he's interesting. Uh, I seldom want to see him take a run at anyone because I know he's fucking going for their head. Yeah, he's gonna really hurt someone. Um, that being said, way, I'm for violence in the game. I'm for it. I just, I agree that you probably shouldn't be fucking hitting people in the head. Yeah. Sorry. I like how you're not allowed to hit anybody in the head, but go ahead and punch them in the head. Fuck yeah. That's okay. 
Well, here's the thing. Here's a weird thing about concussions. They're not typically caused from like getting yeah. the blows to your head that a punch would take. They're caused yeah. by your brain hitting the back of your fucking skull, like yeah. in a whiplash sort of scenario. It, typically, I'm sure you can get yeah. fucking. I'm sure people get concussions all the time by getting punched, but. Um, I watched a hockey documentary about. <laughs> let's take our helmets away. <laughs> It's not a big deal. Concussions aren't anything. Sure, it was well, like <clears throat> there's a there's a case to be made, and they've talked about this in football, um, that the the big helmets with the big face masks and everything make you uh, feel safer yeah. doing more violent things. And then yeah. if you didn't have a face mask on your helmet. You'd you wouldn't go careful. flying in their head first anymore because yeah. you'll wreck yourself. Well, that's um, like Don Cherry when he, years ago, when they uh, brought helmets in and made them mandatory. And I, I should say, fuck Don Cherry. Like, fuck yep. him. I, yep. <laughs> I'm not a Don Cherry fan. Yes, I loved the, like, Rock'em Sock'em VHS when I was a kid, but fuck Don Cherry. He's a dickhead. Um he said when they brought in helmets, he's like, you're going to see more head injuries now. And he, he was right, but yeah. like, it doesn't mean that helmets should ever go away. Your brain is all you have. <laughs> Protect it. Yeah. And what's his, uh, oh, this, a, a dude who played in uh Stanley cup back in the day, just passed away. Um, what's his name? I'm scrolling through my hockey feed. On what app? Um, I just have like a RSS feed. It's mostly just Sportsnet mm. and Yahoo. Um, but what the heck is the guy's name? Chris something. Chris Simon? Is that who it was? Chris w Simon? Was it the guy they were like just passed away this week? Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's his name. I could be fucking wrong. I don't I don't retain information like everyone else on earth. I, I just um have a hard time talking about hockey because I because of it. <laughs> I feel like it's but, Simpsons quotes and I can't remember any. <laughs> the the family is saying like C T E Yeah. Uh is likely involved here. Yeah, of course. Um, well not of course, but like yeah completely. Makes believable. sense. Yeah. And um you know, that's CT is typically like a football thing, but yeah. hockey like, too. I mean, you take a lot of hits into the boards. You take, he was a bit of an enforcer back in the day. So a lot of fighting, a lot of punching, taking a lot of hits to the head. Yeah. And someone from the NHL, I just glanced this briefly, but they were asked at that recent like GM's meeting, what they thought about CT and all that. And the, general sentiment was there's still not enough science yet like, get out of here shit, dude that's some pretty conclusive evidence that's, i mean that's the right that's the that has to be the sentiment like yeah, it has it's to be like tobacco here. companies saying yeah no we, there's not enough none of science backing up that tobacco causes cancer yeah, yeah. right um so this episode, you, you just you guys just announced six yeah. dates mm -hmm. uh, across Ontario. Yeah, you're not leaving Ontario. No, why would we? Well, you can't because there's a big wall. That's true. Can't there's get a big out of, wall that surrounds Ontario. Can't get out of Ford Nation, baby. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I thought it would be interesting. Uh, to talk about or like design or make like your perfect tour bus. Mm. You could have anything. It can, as much as your imagination uh, can, can come up with of what you would want on the perfect tour bus. And it can ideas. be anything from like, what do you want the bunks to be like? What do you want the bathroom to be like? Okay. Okay. What, what snacks would you enjoy on board? Is can we also do a van? Yes, yeah, it can be what? a van. It can be whatever you want it to be. We actually haven't been in a bus in quite some time. Okay. I mean, we're 
But would you about. prefer a bus to a van? Of course, of course. Well, then this is this is doesn't have to be like this is what our van is like. This is like I can have any bus I want and fit it out with anything I want. All right, but then can we do van? It'll be yeah, quick. we can do van too. <laughs> yeah, we can do van. You just wanted to have an extra row of seats. That's it in the van. Oh, we used to have, like, because they used to make, like, I think it was 18 passengers, and they shortened it down to, like, 15 passenger only, and, like, we used to have one of the old long ones. It was fucking fantastic. Like, 30 rows of seats. 30 rows? 30. No. They're itsy-bitsy, man. You had to They're sit itsy across bitsy. them. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, here's one thing I thought of. Yeah, sure. Hit me. What if... You know where the bunks are on either side? Of course. What if across the top, mm -hmm. there was like a king-size bed for one guy Ooh. to be able to go up there and got this huge bed area that spanned across the top of it and everybody walked underneath. But then you would have to... Yeah, like if you were trying to get to the back lounge, you would have to walk sort of with your head Just down. under. Yeah, because the level of the top bunk is like if you're walking underneath it, you're crouched. You Good especially. Luck. Do it. Like you're going to have to crawl. Yeah, that's fine. Like I'm just itsy bitsy, so I just kind of put my head to the side like that, but you would be on your hands and knees and your back would be rubbing up against it. It's okay. And also it would be long as fuck. It would be double the size. Oh, that would be incredible. Yeah, just a huge giant bed. Yeah. And then how would you decide who got that? It would be me. Of course. It would be you. you would, there would be no decision. I'd just roll around up there all night and day. I'd never be able to find any of my stuff. That's too big. It's too big. I already, like, in just those, like, single coffins, I have so much trouble finding my stuff. It's just, like, waking up being like, where'd my phone go? Where's my wedding ring? My glasses! <laughs> Do you take your ring off every night you go to sleep? No. Oh. I always leave it on. I don't Cage know if never I can wears get mine hers. Off. But she doesn't wear hers because it doesn't fit her properly anymore, not because she's out looking for young studs. Um yeah. I I got mine off for the first time in like a really long time. Well, I can take mine off whenever. I can't get mine comes off real easy. I have um two. Mm-hmm. Uh, one is of, of a smaller size because at a, at a time during my marriage, I had lost quite a bit of weight hmm. and my ring was just falling off. And, uh, so I got a smaller one and, um, now I'm back up to the bigger one. Yeah. Mine has um, uh, always been a little bigger. And one time on stage, I was gesturing as one does while they're <gasps> singing and I flung my hand up like this and I felt the ring just going, whoosh, up my finger and I just like crooked my finger right before it went but like caught it like oh <laughs> she's going like I just about flung my wedding ring out into the fucking crowd that would have been cool yeah I would have taken it home I mean it's not like it's an expensive ring it's a fucking uh, I don't know silver it's not I don't know what material it's, it's sentimentally of. expensive yeah cost like a hundred bucks I think um, wh what would you do for lounge seating? Mm. I like the way the lounges are set up. You do? Yeah. Um, what if they were all recliners? Then you wouldn't be able to like lie down though. Like sometimes you find like a nice afternoon where everyone's like off doing stuff and you just fucking lay down on the fucking bench and just go, nice. And then people come in and they try and be quiet, but they're never quiet enough. And, you know, like, oh, I got to get up and give these motherfuckers a seat. Why don't you just go in your bunk? Fuck, that's a super good point. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But the one thing that I like, so it's like the sides of the bus all mm -hmm. have like long sort of couches, sort of yeah. benches. Yeah. Um, but we had a bus once that, so there's the two benches, yeah. right? 
and above each bench was a fucking TV. So there were two oh. TVs on, there's one yeah. TV on each wall. Yeah. And at the time of that, which we were out on the August Brent's Red Tour at that time, uh, we were a big time into Rocket League. Yeah. Right, which I'm sure you've played Rocket League, yeah. the soccer cars. Yeah, soccer cars. But so like you, both TVs were hooked up to Cam's Xbox or whatever the fuck it was. And you would just sit across from whoever you were playing, look at the TV above their head, and they would and do the same for you. And you would play them, and like every oh. now and again, you just like look down and be like, "Fuck you." <laughs> That's awesome. And it was like the best setup. Like it was like a simple, stupid thing. It was one of the nicer buses we've been on, but and I'm sure we only got it because the bus that we ordered broke down or something like that. Because we usually only ride the the lowest <laughs> the cheapest ones so you've you've uh, have you had a bus where the, like the sides pop out briefly um another scenario our bus <laughs> broke down <laughs> on the highway they sent out a bus to pick us up it was like one of the like ones where the sides come out it drove us to the next location, and then they sent another beater to meet us and like, get <laughs> off this fucking beautiful bus and get on to one of the garbage ones. Because they had to send that bus to Dolly Parton. Yeah. And, like, we, when we got into that bus, like, we were literally on the highway in California somewhere, I think. Just hauling all your shit and from like one all bus these cars to the other. were like zipping past us, and we had to like climb out of our fucking like broke down bus and like suck to the side of the highway, like with all our bags and shit like that, and get on the new bus. Um, and it was so beautiful. Like it had it had a fucking, I want to say it was a king size bed, um, but it was probably like a queen or something like that because it's just in the buses. back. Yeah, in instead the back. of a rear lounge. lounge and we just like all went in there and like laid on it we're like woohoo bed <laughs> it's like you haven't been in a bed in like a fucking month because you're right? just like sleeping on this plywood with this like so you get mattress you get 15 it. minutes there's an alarm set everybody gets 15 minutes to sleep in the bed we all just went back and jumped on it and shit <laughs> and actually you know what i said they sent another beater to meet us what mm -hmm. they actually did was they fixed our bus and sent sent it no oh, they sent your your yeah they fixed it. Yeah. Which is great. And the though. problem was the toilet. Yeah. I can't even remember. I think I don't, I don't know anything about how you even get the buses. I just show up and it's there and it's great. Um, and I know we just always get the cheapest one we can because we obviously right. aren't the biggest band on earth. Um, but uh, whatever company it is that gives us those buses, gives us those buses, rents us those buses <laughs> is great is fucking great that's awesome maybe the the goal is to like pick the worst bus so that it'll break down and then they just have to give you a nice bus it may be but they get those things like all the drivers know how to fix them like that's the fucked up thing is like they know what they're doing it's funny on that i think i'm pretty confident it was that abr tour they were like oh you have this fella driving you here's his name <clears throat> and then he showed up and I was like, oh, that's my buddy Swiss. I just didn't know his name. And he was like the Acacia Strains, former merch guy slash tour manager. And I was right. just like, Swiss, are you driving us? And he's like, yeah. I was like, how? <laughs> <laughs> he's like, I figured out how to do it and fix it. And now I'm here. I was like, holy shit, dude. Okay. And I had an absolute blast hanging out with him for however long that tour was um is there somebody on the bus whose job it is to make sure the driver stays awake no you're okay just gambling what choice do you have well you take shifts no yeah you take shifts praying in your bunk <laughs> <laughs> no but like you definitely do um, and I know, like, obviously scary things have happened. Um, but uh, there are nights where you are in your bunk and you feel like you're losing control. 
and uh you wake up and like you can't see anything your curtains pulled and like even if you could you couldn't see out the fucking window because you're right. in the lounge the bunk area and there are definitely times where you sit there just going like are we gonna fucking die right now <laughs> Again, like, I, maybe maybe there are less anxious people on earth that don't do this, but I definitely have several moments on every tour where I wake up in my bunk because of, like, it being, like, kind of bumpy or feeling like you're sliding. Cause, like, yeah. And, like, just, like, awake and staring at the ceiling, which is, like, three or four inches from my face and picturing what it would be like if it came in and crunched on me. Oh. Uh, <laughs> what would That's happen? Rough. Yeah, it, it's... You ever you ever just reach out through the curtain and hope somebody else reaches out to hold your hand through it? <laughs> I think Ben sleeps with his hand out there like that just in case someone needs to grab his hand. <laughs> I think he's thoughtful like that. <laughs> um Okay, bathroom situation. Yeah, there is not there's not really a good one. There's not? No, you can't. What if it was twice the size? And so you had just... room to like Here's the thing. You don't really want room. You don't? Because, A, do you remember what it was like having a piss when you're really drunk? Yes. And, like, you got to have, like, you got to find somewhere to, like, put your hands and, like, hold yourself. So, imagine being drunk like that, but then also being on the highway. Yeah. Right? You're getting thrown all over the place while you're in there. And, like, a lot of the times they'll say, like, if you're going pee, you got to sit down. It's like, nobody, yeah. nobody does it. Um, so it is kind of nice that it's tight. Cause you just like grab onto the walls, yeah. let your dinky fucking dangle. <laughs> and just like, <laughs> <laughs> you brace yourself while you pee. So it's kind of good that it's small, but, um, one thing that some buses have, I'm almost all bandwagons have and bandwagon is like sort of like a half bus made out of a yeah. tractor trailer front yeah. yeah um they all have showers and the showers are fucking lifesavers dude because uh, particularly in north america there's not a whole lot of places that are gonna have showers inside and if you're on a bus and you're not like a big band uh you're not getting hotel rooms so right. if there's no shower on the bus there's no shower in the venues and there's no fucking hotel rooms you just don't shower for weeks at a time. Yeah. Which is when I was in my twenties, fine. Who gives a flying fuck? Yeah. You know, like I'm not letting anyone sniff my dink anyway. What do I care? <laughs> um, but like now being on the wrong end of 35. Yeah. I'm 24. Um, I just <laughs> like, I, I, I would prefer to have a shower every day. Yeah. And it's like, I don't know, don't feel good climbing into my bunk sweaty and like in wet clothes from the yeah. show. It's just like you want to shower every fucking day or night. Uh, yeah, I have to shower every day. Yeah. Like not taking a shower, I feel disgusting. Yeah. I would not feel my best to be able to like meet people, go yeah. play a show. Like I need a shower. Um so that's nice that they have showers mm-hmm. and it's great because it's like you do this like military shower is at least what they call it i don't know if they fucking do this in the military because i don't know anything about the military other than it being like one of the largest contributors to fucking climate change uh, <laughs> <laughs> um but uh so it's called military shower you turn the water on because it's got a fucking reserve. It's just tank. Right. You don't have There's all the water only in the so world. much. Yeah. So you turn it on, you get wet, you turn it off. You yeah. take the soap out, you soap the fuck up, you turn it on, you get all the soap off, you turn it off, and your shower is done. Yeah. You're under five minutes. I don't know about you, but sometimes I'll sit in the shower just like staring down at my feet with hot water pouring on my head, and I'm going, oh, fuck, it's been 20 minutes. That's every day for me. Yeah. I'm a horrible human. I waste so much water in the shower. It's and I also have a, a nice teak shower bench so that I don't even have to be standing under the hot water. I can sit on a nice teak shower bench and let the hot water just pummel me while I sit and just go like this. Wow. And it's the greatest thing in the It sounds the very world. relaxing. It's great. However, sometimes you get out of that shower and you go like, wow, I wasted a big chunk of my day doing nothing yeah 
um, that never happens in these showers. No. And like the thing is, like if you take too long in there, nobody's gonna say anything, but everyone's gonna be like, run in the shower for a long fucking time, man. We gotta wash our hands at some point. What like, were you doing in there? Well, that's were the you, thing. Were you? Did you poop in the shower and then try to stuff the poop down the shower drain? Everyone will figure out about that. HK got mad at me one time because I was wearing my Crocs in the shower. Yeah. <laughs> and we were just in Vancouver where there's a lot of like needles on the street. Right. And he was like, you wearing your fucking outside shoes in outside the shower. Outside shoes in the shower. I was like, I'm trying to fucking wash my Crocs too. And he was like, <laughs> and he was right, by the way. Like he was yeah. right. Um I was discussing how to clean your Crocs in the shower while wearing them with our photographer, Connor, who is a fantastic guy. Um, but he was like, are you telling me you're wearing your fucking outdoor shoes in a shower that all the rest of us are fucking barefoot in? <laughs> you guys don't bring shower shoes? I bring Crocs. One pair. And I wear them all day and in the shower. <laughs> I took a shower on a train once. Oh, hell yeah. And uh, I made sure. I knew there was a shower on the train. So I made sure to bring like a pair of just like plastic flip flops to wear in the shower. Yeah. Because. You know. It's a train. Yeah. How ma- how much are they cleaning the showers in the train? Trains make dudes horny, man. Yeah. Well, that's the other thing. Everybody's a train guy. Yeah. Like you're not um, even when you're when you're pleasuring yourself in that scenario, you're not even thinking about another human being. You're just no. thinking, "I'm on a train right now, baby." Ooh, <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> I always I wait until we're just about to go in a tunnel. Yeah, that's when I really and let that's go. That's what you're thinking about. Yep, you're thinking about as soon a train as I get in that tunnel, man. Tunnel. I'm in that shower and just mm. yeah. Um, but like, wouldn't it be nice if you could, if you had like a bidet oh, and you could oh, do yeah. your number twos mm-hmm. on the bus and that, not have to worry about it? Yeah, but that, I think that's Imagine Land. That's what I'm saying. I, you know what? I think that there are some buses that you can poop on. You just have to be like Jared Leto. You just have to, I feel like you just have to be super rich. Yeah, that's kind of what I'm saying. Like just to, you got to be like... Or, like, it's got to be your bus. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was a band we toured with years and years ago called Abandon All Ships. Um, and I know it can be a little divisive talking about them because some people are like, oh, they're great. Some people are like, oh, they're shit. Oh. But whatever. Uh, great fucking guys. I think they were a pretty good band. Um, I don't think they were an amazing band. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Hey, but, abandon all ships. You guys want to be on the podcast? <laughs> but I loved those guys. I'd love to have them. I'd love to have fucking Ange up here. Um, but they bought an RV. Like, they were fairly early into touring, yeah. and they bought an RV. They came out with us. And they were just flat out shitting on it. Yeah. Um, and I remember they were like, yo, you want to come up? Like, we were touring in a van at that point. We are just like, it was crossing Canada. I think it was, it wasn't summertime. I don't know what the fuck we were doing. We are saving money. Um, and, uh, they're like, yo, you should come up. They called it their bus. They're like, come up on the bus, man. Have a fucking beer. Went up and it just like reeked of human fecal matter. <laughs> just being like, oh my God. It was the moment Riff and I stepped up on there being like, oh, do you guys shit on here? And they're like, yeah, do you need one? <laughs> <laughs> like they're such generous dudes. Like, like, yeah, like shit oh on our yeah, bus. man, do you want to shit on our bus? And we're like, no, <laughs> I want to leave your bus because it reeks of shit. <laughs> so what I don't if, think shitting on a bus is a good thing. What if, what if, but what if it had like a seatbelt? Yeah, then for sure. Okay. Now I think the only good way to shit on a bus is if it had like a lined toilet seat that was like lined with a bag and then like you shit into it it had water in the bag shit yeah. into it it went and then went and like fired it up 20 oh, just went right it was just it fired what it if it was just a hole 
in yeah. the bus. Yeah, I've seen and that. And you just shat out onto the road. Yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, like, went down into some kind of, like, area to be, no. like, fucking loaded out later, but then I thought it'd be funnier if it was just fire and shit all yeah. over the place. <laughs> It's just bags of shit hitting car windshields and stuff. Yeah. Like even like someone like me, like I'd fucking have colitis. Sometimes my stomach (laughs) goes off and I'm in a bad way and I need a bathroom in a hurry. Yeah. Um, I still don't think that like shitting on the bus is still no. I don't think it's going to be a cool thing because like (laughs) you, you got to bring it with you. (laughs) Yeah. It does travel. It's got to travel. Yeah. And I've been in some um, precarious scenarios because of that. There was one day Luke and I were like after a show. It was like three o'clock in the morning. We'd both woken up and I was like, oh my God, I got to shit so bad. And Truk was like, me too, man. So we went and we tried to get back in the venue. It was all locked up. And then like, we're both like panicking. We got these huge garbage bags. And we're like trying to line the toilet being like, oh, fuck. And then the driver showed up. He's like, what are you guys doing? doing <laughs> like, we got a fucking shit <laughs> and then he drove us to a, a gas station oh huh, that's not, nice not to say that we hadn't shit in bags before but it was just like a weird desperate early morning yeah there's no like there's almost no worse feeling in the world than a desperate need to shit yeah it's very scary shitting is the worst part of tour like anytime you see a band, your first thought should be, I wonder where these guys shit today. Yeah. Cause <laughs> it wasn't anywhere it was nice. Weird. I mean, it might be like, I guarantee you, like if you go see Silverstein, you could look at them and be like, I bet they found a nice coffee shop. <laughs> you come see us. You're like, wonder what alleyway these guys fucking ran into this morning desperately because they made their coffee Sitting on, on the edge the of a dumpster. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <clears throat> now, what if... What about this scenario? Okay. You yeah, have... Uh, you have your own bus. The whole bus just for yourself. I'd hate that. And the whole band is five buses on a caravan. I'd hate that. Honestly, like, I know there's people that do that, you know, like, there's people that are bigger than their band, like, I'm yeah. thinking probably Panic at the Disco or something like that. I think that guy <laughs> might have had a separate bus. That's just speculation. Gwen Stefani probably had her own bus. Yeah. But I'd miss my friends. Yeah? You know, one of the saving graces for touring for me it's just like i get to like hang out with my friends and just like be with them all the time and like there is a weird period when it ends where you just like sit there and kind of go like i miss my friends <laughs> you know like yeah it's like waking up and be like yo h what are we doing for coffee today you know or like watching friggin Watch it freaking Ben crawl down out of that top bunk, even though he's just so itsy bitsy. <laughs> <laughs> it's a long jump down. Seeing Hank just freaking roll out of that bunk on the bottom, <laughs> ready to go for the day. I don't know. It's, uh, it's a weird thing. What's the... It's like the... Some people are late like late sleepers some people are like are late risers some people are early risers just yeah. naturally like how does that dynamic work is because it just like the first guy who wakes up everybody's up nah i mean especially on a bus there's usually doors that separate the lounges and the sleeping area mm. on a bandwagon it's a little different um because the bunks are just like right there yeah but um no, when you close your curtain, you can't really hear anything outside of it too well. Really? Uh, I can't anyway. I don't know. Maybe I'm fucking, maybe I have a hearing issue, which I don't because I saw an audiologist today and he hurt me a little. Um, oh. <laughs> but yeah, like it, it, the other thing is like because you're playing late at night and like after you get off the stage fucking earliest is usually like 11 o'clock in the evening mm-hmm. um 
you got tons of fucking adrenaline. Like, I don't care if it's fucking five kids or 5,000 kids, you get off the stage and you're like, even if you did a bad job, your fucking heart races, you got adrenaline going through your system. You don't go to sleep. No. At least that is how it is for us. And like, eventually you look at the clock and you're like, it's four o'clock in the fucking morning and you go to bed. Yeah. Um, so everybody sleeps till like noon. Some days yeah. you wake up and it's like, hey, sound check. <laughs> like, what do you mean sound check? Sound check was at two o'clock. It's like, yeah, it's two o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's two o'clock. <laughs> Which is fucked up because like at home, I'm up at 730 every morning. Yeah. Um, but Timmy doesn't really change it that much. He, like he must change it. But like I got a feeling most days he's up first. He's a he's an early riser. Yeah. He's always been that way, and he just, like, quietly goes out to the front lounge, opens his computer, and works on something. Um, how about Wi-Fi? That's oh, terrible. It's fucking what terrible. It was, what if it was perfect? Like, what if you had gigabit internet Well, here's the, the thing. I, I don't know how. Uh, like, I guess the telecommunication companies have come a long way, because it used to be, we crossed the border, our phones are off. Our phones are cameras. Mm -hmm. It fucking sucked. Um, I I just accidentally stumbled into this bill actually because of you. I got a huge fucking phone bill. And they were like, you're sending a bunch of pictures to some American number. (laughs) That's legitimately what happened. I was like, I'm not paying that. Like, there's no way I'm paying that. So they're like, okay, we can like retroactively tack on this like uh, Canadian and American thing to your fucking phone. It will, it'll cost you five additional dollars a month, but like your dad is transferable. And so this time when we went, I just had all my data. Yeah. And my phone worked perfectly fine. And it was like, what the fuck? I didn't have to pay more. It just was. And it's kind of your fault. Uh, It was amazing. But otherwise, like, we get this, like, stupid little, like, T-Mobile. Yeah, like, hotspot thing. thing. Hotspot. And it goes on the bus. And, like, everybody connects to it. And it's just, like, really bad. Yeah. It doesn't work. And... I don't know if there's a good solution unless you want to go to imagine land again. What if, uh, what if the couches sucked farts? I'd be pissed. You would? Yeah. I, I would prefer the couches to actually blow farts. (laughs) (laughs) Stinky farts are one of the funniest fucking things. I've always loved it about being mm-hmm. on tour. We used to do this thing in the van where like if you have the front windows down and the very back windows open, um, if anyone in the van farts, it whips it around the whole van so quick <laughs> that like you almost instantly smell it. No matter who does it, no matter where they're sitting. And, like we created this like cyclone or whatever inside the fucking van. It was just like, the best <laughs> i do find uh based on who the person is mm-hmm. i i find their farts or the stink of their fart uh more funny or less funny <laughs> you do I yeah i don't know why like luke farts and it reeks or cam farts and it reeks and it's so funny like it's the funniest <laughs> thing i've ever heard but <laughs> for some reason and i love mo i love him yeah. always have always will when his farts reeked i was like mad <laughs> i don't know why <laughs> and it, like it was a like very specific stink that it had about it like i think because he used a lot of baby powder uh, <laughs> the way that it smelled just made me fucking angry <laughs> that's really funny they, yeah. We need like you know how there's like uh, people who have mesophonia. No, mesothelioma. It's like, no, it's the thing where like right. you're sitting across from somebody and they're eating like cereal, and you want to fucking tear their throat out. I don't feel that way about Mo. Okay. <laughs> Even when his farts are stinky, I just didn't like his farts for some reason. I, don't I know, just wonder if there's like him. an equivalent thing of like. 
it's not mesophobia. It's uh, it's like a smell of fo- o- 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 I don't know. Olfactory. Yeah. I don't know. Something <clears throat> where certain people's smells just make you angry. Yeah, t- you know what? I don't love Tim's farts either. I mean, but who does? It's Tim's farts. We always used to say, uh, you know what? No, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going <laughs> to share that. Share that. <laughs> I'm not going to share that. <laughs> um, the last thing I have on here, well, I have, I have a couple things, but I'm, I think we're, we wanted to talk about a van, so I want to give time to talk about a van, but what if, just bear with me here, what I'm if you that. had a butler on the van on the bus i would um i don't know that i would like it i don't jeeves go in the back get me a beer yeah but you know what when you're sitting around with your brothers you say would you get your poor old brother a beer next time you get up and your brother does yeah but what if the guy was in a tuxedo (sighs) you know what Henry's usually in a tuxedo anyway. Really? Uh, wow. Yeah. yeah. It's Henry. He's very classy. Uh, <laughs> no, but uh, I don't know. I, I, I don't think I'd ever be comfortable with someone just like waiting on me constantly. Yeah. You know, it just didn't, it doesn't sit right with me. And plus, like you just, if you really want another beer and you're too lazy to get up and get it, just wait for someone else to get up and get another beer and you go, hey, you brother? That is a very specific piece of language that we uh, fashioned a long time ago, and it it lives on. Yeah. Like, it comes from some, like, Tom Waits thing. Just get your poor old brother a beer. Um, And we would would say that to each other all the time. And then it just turned into saying, your brother. And that just means, like, hey, give me a a beer. Give me a beer. (laughs) Uh, what about laundry? I'd never do it. First time I ever did it on tour was on the Pliny tour in Australia, and HK did it for me. (laughs) You can bring less stuff if you do laundry more often. Maybe. (laughs) Here's the thing. I went to Europe with a backpack once for like a fucking month and a half. Mm Mm-hmm. And you did laundry, like, every three days? Nope. I didn't know. Like, it was funny. We were picking Arif up to get to the airport. And he gets in the van. He sees my backpack. He's like, is that all you're bringing? And I was like, yeah. And he was like, God, respect, dude. I love that. <laughs> I was like, what? And he was like, you're just bringing a backpack on, like, a fucking six-week tour? And I was like, six weeks? <laughs> <laughs> I did most of Warp Tour with the clothes on my back. Oh. I had a bag, but it was in the van that dropped us off, and it left before I got my bag. With your bag. bag. Yeah. Uh, and I called our manager who was driving it at the time. I was like, my bag. And he was like, ah, I've already been on the road for like two minutes. <laughs> Tough luck. It's like, you fucking. All right, van things. Yeah, so there's not many. Okay. I'll tell you one thing we did one time that was a blessing and a curse. And I'm sure a ton of other bands have done this. We took out the back, the two rows that come right behind the fucking um, driver's seats, the captain's Mm -hmm. chairs there. We took them out and put a mattress there. Big ass Mm -hmm. fucking dirty old mattress. We thought it would be great for sleeping sucked but we had a lot of fucking tournaments of uh what's that game turn down a bower lose for an hour euchre oh just sitting around on the we played euchre tournaments constantly on it it was the greatest um fucking amazing we also had a crock pot in the van what would you cook we'd chili always vegan chili as well that's not a good thing to... No? No. Always worked out great for us. Vegan chili is usually, like, heavy on the beans. Oh, yeah. 
Well, it had uh, veggie ground round in it. Yeah, that, that I've had that chili it's before. It's pretty good. But yeah, we would just make a pot of chili. And the whole band would. <laughs> Luke always liked to get like little fucking gadgets. Like, I, I don't know what it was. Like, we'd be in a truck stop. They sell all sorts of things that just, like, plug into your fucking cigarette lighter. Yeah. I um, mean, a crock pot was one of the things that he bought. Um, he's good at he's good at van touring. I love... Now, this is illegal. So, chill. <laughs> FBI, stop listening. I love being in the van with the boys and drinking. Oh, you know, like not, not a big deal, but like, that's my favorite place to just fucking hammer a bunch of booze. (laughs) It's just like sitting in the van down the highway and just like, we, I spent a huge chunk of my life just doing it. Like I want to pick the people in that van and that's, uh, well, you know what? The original fellas. With fairless driving. Yeah. And, Take uh, it back to when you were 20 years old. And, yeah. And just having an absolute blast. Yeah. One time we were drinking in the back. Always in the back. We keep it in the back. We don't try yeah. and fucking... Well, I mean, you really, we just did it wherever, but not in the driver's seat. Yeah. And it always sucked for the driver, too, because he'd be handing them up big fucking glasses of piss the whole time. <laughs> like, throw this out, would you? Um... But one time we were drinking pretty good in the back and we were also smoking cigarettes at that time. That was a lot of fun. Just like being in the States when we were like in our early 20s, chugging beers and smoking fucking camels, Mm -hmm. camel lights. On the road, driving through fucking Minnesota. There's nothing. And yeah, but we were, uh, it was like pitch black. So you couldn't see anything. All you could see is like, and like I, I, I injected a little line about it kind of in one of the songs that Arif wrote on Skrillis. And it's like, all you can see is like people's faces light up by the like ember glow oh, of yeah. the end of the cigarette. Yeah. And uh, so we can't fucking see anything. Anyways, Luke goes to put his, <laughs> his cigarette out. He just reaches and just goes. And Tim was sleeping on the bench in front of him with his feet hanging off the end of it and what he had pressed his cigarette right into Tim's foot. Uh, <laughs> so, so Timmy just sat up screaming. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and like, <laughs> my fondest memories happen in the back seat where we're just fucking going a little cuckoo because we're stir, we're stir crazy. And, uh, yeah. Hammer and beer. Yeah, I, I would have a hard time, I think. Yeah? Like, I did some... I, mostly buses, but like not tour buses. Like these were just like school buses. Uh, yeah, no. I mean, they're like touring buses. It's just all seats. Oh, okay. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, like really long trips across the West when I was in high school for like baseball tournaments and stuff like that. And you just like sleep in your seat and, um, that's a, you get pretty stir crazy. Yeah. Yeah, you do that in the van, but like, best part about it is like, it's your van. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You want to pull yeah. over, grab a case of beer, and just go absolutely bonkers? Yeah. Do it, dude. I mean, yeah, it affects the show the next day. <laughs> 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 we didn't care at the time. <laughs> Um, we weren't making any money anyway. I mean, someone was, one us. <laughs> somebody was, though. Yeah. That's the important part about capitalism, is that somebody was. Yeah. Yeah. It was fun. Um, Van Halen. Great. This will be good. Very famous for uh, having no brown M&Ms as part of their writer. Wolfgang Van Halen. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Wolfie. I think he is. Um, but basically, they just did it to make sure that, like, the they venue or whoever was doing it was, like, re- actually reading the rider. Yeah. Um, I guarantee you they read Van Halen's rider. I guarantee you they do not read ours. Yeah. And that's okay. Uh, El- Elton John mm. uh, always had a second dressing room. 
just for his glasses. Oh, I thought maybe he would have one for dressing and one for undressing. Nope. Just the room for his glasses. It had to be kept at a very specific temperature. It's wildly specific, but you know what I mean? Like Elton John is Elton John. He is fucking bigger than life itself. And Mm -hmm. I would expect him to have some kind of uh, bullshit like that or else I'd be disappointed. Yeah. Lady Gaga. uh, She had to have a mannequin with very long pink pubes. That seems like she's... uh, you're just doing that so people can find out. Yeah. Uh, ACDC. Mm-hmm. No alcohol whatsoever. Is that true? True. They were, were they uh, sober? I guess at the time. I, th- I think that would make sense, right? If like you had even just a sober member. Yeah. It's like, how do you just like, if, especially if someone can't really like control themselves around alcohol, it's like, well, then if we want to keep doing this specifically with them, we all have to fucking fuck it off. Yeah. Um, Eminem. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. Had uh, the venue build him a koi pond backstage. Every day. Mm Mm-hmm. You know, koi are just fucking, like, they're just... Big goldfish. uh, Yeah, but they're... Yeah, they're big goldfish, but they're fucking uh, Cisco's. They're, uh... What is that? They're bottom feeding yucky fish yeah um we always called them cisco so it, the name is escaping me right now my brain's not fucking working but like they're horrible stinky yucky fish i don't know why people like fucking koi jack white no bananas man after my own heart i mean i think that's fair yeah like if because like a lot of venues are going to give you like fruit and vegetables mm-hmm. uh, regardless of what your rider says so it's like I don't know I think it's fair to just be like hey no bananas yeah I think I, and like it said like this is a no bananas tour I don't want to see anything any bananas anywhere in the venue it's like we're not fucking around yeah like do not like the bananas wronged me in bananas. some way and N-O-T-B-A-N-A-S yep they were not touring. Jack White was not touring with um, uh, Gwen Stefani at the time, I don't think. Um, he should. Pharrell had to have a framed photograph of Carl Sagan. Okay. Um, in his dressing room. That's cool. uh, Fred Durst. Why wouldn't he just get one on the first day and bring it with him everywhere? <laughs> Fred Durst always needed two large bottles of baby oil. Oh. Uh, we used to have um, any Dennis Quaid movie on DVD <laughs> that's pretty good and we got a lot like it, because people would see that and they would be like that's fucking funny dude yeah and then they would bring us one that's awesome hey you know how many times I've seen The Rookie it's a great movie I've never seen it oh Heard it's a good movie though. Of course, Dennis Quaid's the best. We um, always got the day after tomorrow or something like that, which is is, is a good movie. It's funny as hell, uh, but there's better Dennis Quaid movies. Okay, the last one on my list. Yep, Blink One Eighty Two. Okay, J Crew Boxers. I don't know what that is. Like I understand the underwear. Yeah, but they just were asking for new underpants. At every I, I think that's totally reasonable. Yeah. The sword? Um, I don't know if they were just doing this for the tour that we were on or if they continued doing it, but they, their rider was like a big bag of socks and a big bag of gummy bear, bears. <laughs> gummy bears. <laughs> I don't know why I said yeah. But like, that was their whole rider. Like They didn't want sandwiches. They didn't want anything. They were like, we'll take buyouts. Just give us some money and some gummy bears and some new socks, please. And I was like, I kind of think that's smart. Yeah, I would think, like, uh, I think it's smart, like, uh, a t-shirt, a pair of underwear, and some socks yeah. at every venue. Then you don't have to pack to go on tour. See? You wear your pants. Yeah, that's it. Just bring pants and a hat. Yeah. 
Dude. So I like I used to bring one pair of pants with me. Yeah. Now I bring several because like I'd wear them on stage and they get all like wet. Yeah. And then I'd just wear them all day, every day. Yeah. And we were playing in Houston one time. And we were like a, a while into the tour. So my pants were like basically wouldn't bend at the knee. Yeah. Gross. Um, and this fella who I met um, through Jordan from The Contortionist. Mm-hmm. Uh, his name is Miguel. A fucking awesome guy. Uh, he came on the bus and he was wearing these nice, light denim Levi's. <laughs> and I was like, dude, I love those pants. And he was like, you want them? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, I'm not going to take your pants. And he was like, well, just trade me. I'm like, you don't want these pants. Trust me, they're fucked up, man. They stink. Like, they're wet from the show tonight, and they're, like, dried from, like, fucking 40 other shows. And they're in a bad way. And he was like, ah, come on. And so I traded Miguel those pants, and they were my favorite pants until they, like, actually fell apart. Mm-hmm. I loved them so much. I wore them constantly. I felt so good and confident in them. And even... Later, when they fell apart, I cut them into, like, shorts, and I wore them until they fucking fell apart further. My so favorite. you made the most of those pants. Yeah, and the years and years. Like, when they finally, when the dick and ass finally went right out of them, Cage was yeah. like, you have to throw those out. And I was like, no. They were a gift. God. <laughs> Framing the remnants. <laughs> <clears throat> um, <clears throat> is there anything... Like, if you could have anything on your rider. No, I'm, like, happy. You are? <laughs> yeah, I think there's a huge contrast between touring in North America and touring in Europe. Like, uh, you get really spoiled in Europe. Yeah. Like, you walk into the venue in the morning, and there'll be, like, coffee and tea, and, like, all sorts of, like, breakfast fucking shit. And then as the, like, afternoon rolls in, they'll bring in, like, a meat tray and veggie tray and all sorts of stuff and, like, all sorts of fucking food. And you just, like, have yeah. food to, like, eat all day during the day. Um, North America has become better. But, like, back in the day, and I'm not sure if it was because we were just, like, kids and stupid, they'd be like, here's a fucking bag of Tortitos, Tortitos, how do <laughs> Tostitos, Tostitos is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Uh, There's some chips and salsa. Yeah, it'd, it'd be ch- chips and salsa and a case of beer, and you go, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Throw a bottle of whiskey in it, and I'm happy. Yeah. And that was it. Uh, and you know what? Like, I'm still pretty happy with that. Like, if I had a rider, I'd be like, give me some throat coat and have like a, one of those things that makes hot water. Mm-hmm. What's that? A tea kettle? A tea kettle back there. And uh, I don't know. Case of beer. Bottle of whiskey. Maybe some Tostitos. I'm pretty happy with that. And then just give me money so that I can buy food. Okay. Like that's usually like they they have a certain amount that comes out of your back end. Right. Usually that they can spend on your rider. So it's like it's not like someone's yeah. just fucking giving it to you you're paying for it yeah um but usually like you could any day just be like i don't want any of this shit just give me money <laughs> they give me money i, I like that yeah just money's good food. yeah it's called a buyout we're All learning right. so much yeah i mean this is this is the inside shit that i guarantee you everybody wants to hear yeah well they're stupid yeah um <laughs> our listeners are the worst no um, oh, we never even thanked our listeners today no we From didn't the- even thank our sponsor this episode is sponsored by Cornbot, <laughs> <laughs> who's never been on a tour bus uh it's also brought to you by our patrons on patreon and if you'd like to become one of them and have your name fucking listed here by old fritzum go to patreon.com slash podcast the hero now sign up for <laughs> as little as two bucks or something yeah it's not that it's not that much money 
Um, for some reason, this isn't letting me open the Patreon page. Okay, let me try it. Do you have the list in front of you? No. Oh. I don't even know the address. You don't know the web address? Okay. Uh, here we go. Peggy Thrill. Oh, yeah. Green Street. Green. Davy P. Penis. And my mom actually signed up. Wait, is that a user or is that you saying your mom? No, that's the user. This says, and my mom actually signed up is the user's name. <laughs> Every week, I thought you were just being like, your mom signed up and mm. you were just like reading nope. and just like telling me that. Nope. That's the user's name. <laughs> and my mom actually signed up. That confused me. Uh, Phi, AE uh. common thread. Uh, I say A-E, but it's like that A and E combined. I don't know how to say that. I think you just pronounced that A. A, common thread. Okay. Evan, Zane, Rody loves my dink. And I do. After sex cough syrup. Ooh. Spooky James. Uh, Deconomous. Mm-hmm. Mushy, Zach. Mushy. Zach. The first Dan. The first Dan. The Cage last Pandas. Man. Corn Cage Man. Man. Corn Man. Jeffrey, Mason, TBJ, Yuri, Fruit Punch Samurai, Ashwin, and High Tops. Yuri, the drummer for MXPX? I don't know. Now, I do know that the drummer for MXPX is a big fan of this podcast, so it's probably him. Really? No! Why not? I don't know. He is a nice guy. I met him. I listened to MXPX as a kid. Of course. I listened to them as an adult. Responsibility! (laughs) Um, We have a game. Hell but this is also yeah. part of uh, your gift. But I need what I need you to do before you, I go in and look at your gift. I need you to uh, get, answer some questions for me. I can't wait. They're to not answer. questions. I just need you to provide some information. Oh, this is one of those uh, one of those things where you I'm gonna give you like an adverb and stuff, yep. and you're gonna fill it. It's called a Mad Lib. Mad Lib. That's what it's called. So I need a type of wild mammal. Um, what are those ones called? Uh, what are those ones called? An opossum. Okay, that works. I need an exclamation. God damn it! God damn it! Uh, an adjective. What one's an That's adjective? a describer word. Oh uh, yeah, stinky. Stinky. Uh, a noun, a person, place, or thing. Yeah. Just uh, my penis. Your penis. Mm-hmm. Another noun. Your penis. My penis. Yeah. A type of food. A durian fruit. Durian fruit. Okay. Tastes like. Corn. A utensil. A utensil. Uh, what? What's a utensil again? You know, like for eating things with a knife or a fork or a Chopsticks. spoon. What? Chopsticks? Just trying to make anything. Uh, an article of clothes. <sighs> Negligé. Negligé. <laughs> <laughs> I, I find it weird that negligé and nickliché sound a lot alike. Yeah, they do. One of them's the singer 98 Degrees. One of them a, gets you hot. A name, that, a name you would give your pet. Banjo. Banjo? Yeah. Okay. And one more type of food. Human shit. That's not a food. Uh, Every week we say... Human shit. Thank you. Okay. Uh, Okay, give me one second, and I will... Did you create this Mad Lib from scratch? Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Um, And then I'm going to read it to you, and this is your gift... Um, blah blah blah. The sounds of Fritzy doing things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah. Do 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 do. This is me, my whole regular life. Like when I'm doing stuff around the house, I'm doing dishes. I'm like, bah, 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 do, bah. do 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 with the dishes. Dude, your mustache looks good. That's my real gift. Is it? You like it? I really do like it. All right. 
I was very worried about it. You shouldn't be. You look uh, handsome as the devil. The devil himself. The fallen angel Lucifer. Uh, this is real, real, real bad. Oh, it's no good? Uh, I mean, it's good. It's just real bad. Um... I'm just filling in the blanks here with your answers. I watched and, this uh, show recently called Extraordinary. Yeah. I very much enjoyed it. But the end of the season that is available, this girl falls into a hole, spoiler alert, a void. And then they think she's like dead or whatever, but then she just lands on some grass and then she looks up and she's like, oh, what the hell? And then it's over. Piss That's me it? Off. Yeah. Like, you're supposed to be like, oh, she's somewhere that she f- recognizes. But wait till next season. Like, don't give me a cliffhanger unless you have next season ready to go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, like, that. that's the common age, okay? There is no patience. By the time fucking Extraordinary Season 3 comes out, I will not remember Season 2. And I enjoyed it. I loved it. I'm pissed. (laughs) Hey, friends, I'm pissed. Uh, I'm almost finished here. That's all right. I'm just trying uh, to fill the air. This is going to be a trip here. Uh, Okay. I just have... Zoinks! That one. I think this is the last one. Fitzy, you think the Red Wings are going to make the playoffs? I do. They just won. They just beat the Islanders. Are they in a spot right now? Yeah, I think they're in the the last wild card spot. Uh, I was starting to feel like when they were on their seven game losing streak, um, <clears throat> that. Uh, the whole thing about uh, the Leafs aren't going to make the playoffs unless Matthews scores 100 goals no. thing. Uh, I thought maybe I misheard it, and it was the Wings aren't going to make the playoffs unless Matthews scores 100 goals. <laughs> and I was like, we're fucked. Do you think there's any um, correlation between uh, Larkin's absence? Yes. The team slump. Yes. Larkin's presence. Yes. Because it puts all the, the it, it it puts all the pieces in. We're place. not great up the middle. <laughs> we have one really good centerman, and then we have three. Nah. And so when you take out the only good center we have, uh, scoring goes. Yeah, he got two of the six goals tonight. Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> Rody and Fritz were walking through the dark woods when they came across a tiny baby opossum. That's cute. God damn it, Rody said. <laughs> it was cold and shivering and probably hungry. Fritz thought it would be a good idea to take the opossum home and nurse it back to health. Rody thought it was a stinky idea. That's true. Fritz got the opossum back to his house and made it a little nest out of Rody's penis and Fritz's penis. <laughs> we intertwined our penises <laughs> to create a little nest. Too bad we we didn't have extra foreskins yeah, yeah. To, to make it more comfy. He I warmed like up it. some durian fruit and fed the monster with, a, with little chopsticks. Okay. Uh, soon the opossum was starting to perk up. It would venture out of its nest and explore Fritz's house. The opossum was wanting to play, and it would steal the negligee out of the laundry hamper. Oh, fucking crazy. Fritz decided to name it Banjo. Oh, that's sweet. But Banjo was always hungry. It would eat and eat and eat. Its favorite food was human shit. (laughs) Soon it had doubled in size, then doubled again and again. It was getting strong, too. It would play tug-of-war, and soon it would pull the rope right out of Fritz's hand. At night, they would curl up together on the couch, and Fritz would tell Banjo all about his adventures with his pal, Rody. Banjo listened intently, almost as if to understand everything that Fritz had said. 
Rhodey and Cage really wanted to meet Banjo, so they invited Fritz over to their house. Fritz packed Banjo up into his car and drove them to Canada to visit Rhodey and Cage. When Fritz knocked on the door, Cage opened it, and Banjo ate her head off because she was mean to Fritz, and they all lived happily ever after. <laughs> It was getting to the point where I was like, I've said all the things and he's just like going. And then I, I realized this whole thing was about getting back at cage who doesn't listen to this podcast. <laughs> I'm just kidding. There you go. Wow. That's real special. Yep. I liked it. I liked the part where we intertwined our penises mm -hmm. to make a nest for this opossum. What is happening right now? I don't know. I opened this thing. It says Fritzy's Gobble Fun. <laughs> yeah, Fritzy's Gobble Fun. <laughs> and the instructions say, hello, Fritzy. Gobble as much as possible. He's a very hungry boy. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't... Click on the green flag and press the arrows. Oh, wait, hang on. Do you got your speakers up? I'm hearing it. All I hear is music, but I don't see anything. You don't see anything? Uh-uh. Oh. What is it? Um. Okay, I see what's happening. Let's see if this will work. It's Fritzy's Gobble Fun. Yeah. And it, um. You haven't seen it. I have not seen it yet. <laughs> my, it said my browser doesn't support whatever it was. Now I see it. I'm in a different browser and now I see it. Okay. Are you playing it? I don't know how you're going to represent this on the podcast. <laughs> Are you playing? I'm at 18. Oh, nice. I don't. Does this just go forever? Yeah, until you drop one. And it's really easy. Oh, I missed one. And it made a fart noise. Yeah. And now it's over. And that's your score. I'm going to uh, do a screen cap video. And I will put it in. I but made you a video game. Rody made me a video game called Fritzy's Gobble Fun. <laughs> he drew the my background. Yeah. Like, very accurately. In it? And then drew me... Uh, and I make the guy move around and eat shit <laughs> as it falls from the sky. My favorite part is when you catch the shit. It goes, mm, yum, yum, yum. Yeah, but look at your face. The animation changes for just a second and there's like shit all over its face. <laughs> oh, there is. <laughs> Pretty cool game, hey? Did you know that I was a programmer? How did you do this? <laughs> so I made it. How on... long have you been working on this? Oh, it, it just not that long. Two full days. Oh my God. Two eight hour days. Seriously? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, it didn't take that long. It's quite easy. Um, I made it on this website called scratch, which is, uh, <clears throat> It's like it's MIT. Yeah, it's an educational platform created by <laughs> MIT to teach children like the basics of code. Um, works great for me. I think it looks slick too. It is so good. <laughs> and it, I think uh, that link should be available. I think we can embed that on the Patreon so anyone can play it if they want. I think we probably can. Yeah, because when I went to share it with you, it was like, do you want to just copy this link or do you want to copy the embedded link or the embedding link? Yeah, we could just put it out there. So that'll be on the Patreon if, oh if you want to play it. Otherwise, fucking whatever. It's just a simple catch game. 
but it is worth playing for like the 30 seconds that you do play it. And the the art, let me just say, the artwork. And that's not my, I went through a different couple different iterations of you and I settled on just like your whole body is your head. Like yeah. some legs it's, off it. it's real good. I'm proud. I'm fucking proud of myself. It's really good. Yeah. Um, also, the background. Took me a minute to get just right. And like, it's part blue and part purple. Yeah. And which blurry is as fuck. Blue and purple. Yeah. I put some real thought and consideration in it. Yeah. I even Th- made that is, music. You made the music too? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And that's why it's not a perfect loop, which is, uh, it was really difficult to get it to loop perfectly. Like I uh-huh. used one of their fucking things, but because I made it, it won't loop perfectly, which is really aggravating to me. It has, oh, it has all the code in it too. Oh, you can see inside it? Yeah. Yeah. Holy shit. I put some work in. You really did. <laughs> it's Fritzy's Gobble Fun. Oh, my God. The official game of Podcast the Hero, Fritzy's yeah. Gobble Fun. <laughs> uh, I was so happy with my Mad Lib. It was a great Mad Lib. But you made a fucking video game. <laughs> I wanted well, to make it like a RPG. I even bought an RPG maker, but I don't understand how to use it. <laughs> <laughs> it was on sale. It was like three bucks. Okay. I was going to say. Yeah. But it's scary. Um, that is fucking phenomenal. As soon as we're done, I'm going to go and make Jenny play it. <laughs> I think he played it. Sure. She liked it a lot, too. I'm sure she did. Yeah. Until she, she understood that it was a platform for children. And she went, oh, well, you should show Houston how to do this and then stop doing it yourself. Yeah, I bet Houston would have fun with it. No, I don't think he's quite at the point that he can understand that shit yet. Oh, no, he's smart. Yeah, but he's also six. You know, that's, like, a, that's enough. <sighs> if it ain't Friday night at Freddy's, it ain't nothing to him. <laughs> uh. Well, I mean, I think that wraps her up. Yeah. For yeah. tonight. Um, check out the Patreon. Yes. Um, I want to plug something that's on the Patreon. There is a post available to anyone on the Patreon that lets you, uh, that, that is for you to put prompts mm. for AI episodes for us to create. Yeah like characters and sh- just put ideas in there and we will throw those into AI and make little fake episodes within episodes from that. Yeah. Cause it's fun. So much fun to do. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. AI is stupid as fuck. Yes. <laughs> so please uh, take advantage, go in and throw your ideas in there. Um, God, I hope at AI some didn't point, hear me. At some point we need to, um, we need to, get a score update on the gifts yeah true um i'll I'll go in and do that for next episode we'll make sure we give a, a score update on who's who's winning mm. um based on the polls and uh yeah i think that's it get your tickets get your tickets to come see us play yeah we're gonna play the dungeon i can't wait that's pretty cool some guy on Facebook or whatever was like, play the built more. I was like, it's across the street. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, has sentimental value to us. Right? <laughs> I'm sure it was a um, misunderstanding. Um, we, I will be at the show in St. Catharines. Oh, you're coming to St. Kitts? You're coming to yeah. the festival? Nice. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. Uh, I'm going to see all you guys there. Hell yeah. So, um, I think with that, like... I guess I have to eat the shit. And I have to fuck myself. Yep. I have to fuck myself. I have to fuck myself. I'll fuck you next time, Gadget. <laughs> <laughs>
also pick a picture from your... Is he C? Uh, 